There is no other site in the world that more influenced hazardous waste management than Love Canal in Niagara Falls, New York. This brief video cannot do justice to this very important environmental health event. It's a long, complicated story, and I encourage you to explore additional sources should this topic interest you. I especially recommend the Love Canal collection at the University of Buffalo of the State University of New York. Well, it all started around 1890 when William T. Love attempted to connect the upper and lower Niagara River to capitalize on the hydraulic differential and generate power. Here are some aerial photos of the area. The canal was about a mile long and 50 feet wide. Upon abandonment, it filled with water and children used it as a swimming hole. The city of Niagara used this site as a garbage dump in the 1920s, and the U.S. Army actually dumped industrial waste here in the 1940s. But ultimately, the site was purchased by the Hooker Chemical Company for use as an industrial waste site. Hooker lined the excavation with impermeable clay and began filling it with 55-gallon drums of industrial and toxic waste. Organic solvents such as benzene, toluene, trichloroethylene, chemicals such as aldehydes, acids, oxidants, and literally a soup of chemicals and sludges were placed there. But Hooker wasn't breaking the law. In the 1940s and up until almost the 1970s, placing industrial waste in metal drums and burying them was considered state-of-the-art practice. All chemical industries were doing this, and it was considered acceptable practice. The site was sealed, capped, and closed in 1953. But the town was growing and needed land for a new school and housing. So the town leaders put pressure on the Hooker Chemical Company to sell the land. The company resisted knowing what was buried there, but ultimately relented and sold the site for $1 to the school board. Here's the famous deed of 1953 and the statement warning of what was buried there and the liability waiver. Pause the video to read the entire paragraph. So you see, everybody knew what was buried there in 1953. The school was built against the advice of many engineers and the company and the area developed. You can see the 99th Street School in the middle. During construction of the school, the cap in closing the canal was disturbed, but ultimately the major disturbance to the landfill was the installation of cross streets and sewers in the 1970s. The cap was breached and after a period of heavy rains, toxins started to escape. The rest is history. In 1976, two investigative journalists from the Niagara Gazette, David Pollack and David Russell, tested sumps and found toxic chemicals. But it wasn't until 1978 when Michael Brown investigated complaints of health effects and reported them did regulators take notice. However, it was Lois Gibbs that took the fight to the people. Her grassroots, her grassroots activism is world-renowned and many consider her the champion of Love Canal. Dr. Whalen, Dr. Robert Whalen, the New York State Health Commissioner, declared a state of emergency and ultimately people were evacuated. Here's a map of the emergency declaration area, the dotted line. Ultimately, about 280 homes were vacated, with most of the inner ring being demolished. That's the pink and green zones. Remediation started years later. The school was demolished. And then the aerial photo you see here has the home still present, but ultimately they were demolished and in turn buried. The waste, however, were never removed. It was considered too much of an environmental health risk to do so, so they contained the, they contained the waste. This diagram shows the multiple layers of containment that was installed. The wastes are essentially entombed in the canal with no migration possible. Pause and take a minute to understand this diagram. Dozens of sampling wells were installed, 
to ensure chemicals were not migrating out of the canal. Each black dot is a sampling well. Here's one of the leachate sampling stations today. After, after, for years, daily air sampling was done. However, this is one of the uh, original air sampling stations. But consistent findings of no detectable levels cause this program to be suspended. But periodic air monitoring is done today, and the site gets a lot of attention. 21 years and $400 million later, the site is a large, well-manicured, empty field. But it is tightly guarded. Local streets and houses are deserted. I visited the site many times with students, colleagues, and even my kids. I even photographed a fox running around. I was told there's a whole family of them living at the canal. But it's a strange and desolate place. There's an administrative building operated by a contractor who monitors the wells and treats the leachate from the canal. But lots of abandoned homes are boarded up as is the local church. In 2004, the site was taken off the Superfund list and today the community is known as Black Creek, a historic reference. And there are even new homes right up against the canal. Most recently, about 200 abandoned homes have been put back on the market and quickly sold out. Even, re even resales are occurring. With regard to the environmental health of the area, I believe it's probably the safest place to live in the U.S., at least the urban areas. The environmental monitoring and attention this site gets and will get is unparalleled. Whether it's air monitoring, soil, groundwater, or community health surveys, this site is very well looked after. Interestingly enough, the health effects to Love Canal residents is not clear or at all definitive. Numerous poorly designed health surveys and studies have been discounted and even epidemiological studies have not conclusively linked disease to this exposure. Pause and take a minute to understand figure two from a New York State Department of Health study. But the research continues. This site, cr this site created the world's largest cleanup program, that being the Superfund program at US EPA. In 2013, there were over 1,300 hazardous waste sites on the national priorities list, but the first one was Love Canal. This slide presents the history of Love Canal. It's a good summary. Well, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and learned something new. Next time you visit Niagara Falls, take a short detour and head to 99th Street by the river. You'll be driving through the most famous or infamous waste site in U.S. history. Be well and thanks for listening.